All right, well, the Trump administration outraging the left over its extreme vetting and tougher border controls. So we wanted to know how much harder it was for our ancestors to get here. That's right. So I took a trip a couple days ago to the historic Ellis Island right here in New York to find out exactly how tough the immigration process used to be. We're here at Ellis Island, America's primary immigration gateway for over 60 years. From 1892 to 1954, over 12 million immigrants walked through those doors and were processed as they entered America. We're here to learn about that process and how it compares to the immigration process today. Ranger Johnson. Uh, Pete, how are you how doing? How are you? Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah. Where are we right now? Right now you've walked into the baggage room, and so when uh, immigrants would come uh, off the, the barges coming in, the, the ferries, they come right in here. Uh, they'd be encouraged to check in their luggage right away. After they drop their luggage, where are they going? They're going to begin their inspection process of the health examination. There would be uh, uh, at least six doctors. Six doctors? Right. That would be watching you as you uh, come up and stop at these landings and then uh, make certain turns and different angles. That would provide the doctors with uh, vantage points to really make an assessment of your so they're looking for physical health and condition. That's right. They would indicate what uh, seemed to be wrong or seemed to have a problem uh, by this this chalk mark system. So chalk marking. So they would yes. come up with chalk and literally literally right on your lapel or maybe on your hat or you know some part of your your outfit. This is effectively where new immigrants meet the bureaucracy and the immigration laws of the United States of America. That's right. So they're trying to determine whether the individual uh, will be able to work okay, in some fashion, earn money, uh, that they are healthy, uh, and also uh, to determine that they're not likely to become a public charge. Those are the main three. What does public charge mean? Public charge would mean that, uh, th that the government, um, uh, through taxes um, being paid, are somehow going to have to take care of these people. How many people were turned back on a, on a total basis? We'll talk about uh, maybe about 20% that were initially detained for either legal issues or health issues. But out of all that and all those numbers, only about 2%, 2% are actually excluded or sent back. Well, there were several different types of uh, mental tests or exams. Uh, one of them, one of them uh, right yes, it's actually uh, <laughs> literally just a, a piece of wood that's been okay. sawed uh, into puzzle pieces. It's not clear <laughs> that I would have been admitted. It's not clear at all. We're standing at kind of the podium where a final judgment is given. I also see, you know, whether you're an anarchist mm -hmm. or whether you're a polygamist or whether you've committed a crime. Exactly Anarchists right. were a threat. They want to make sure you're not one. Right. And by 1901, you know, uh, McKinley, President McKinley, is assassinated by um, uh, an anarchist. So by uh, at least by 1903, a version that we have, the question has been added. Part of the idea uh, was uh, perhaps to impress upon them the idea of a patriotism to this new country and uh, as the term would develop, uh, uh, Americanism. As millions of immigrants came through, a lot of things changed in the way it was configured. One thing never changed, the presence of huge, beautiful American flags that greeted every single new immigrant that entered this room. The idea was, you're not, you may have come from any corner of the earth, but you are now here in America to be an American. And our expectation is that you will work hard, have an allegiance for this country, and do everything you can to move your family forward and this country forward. It was the idea that made America a very special place. You know, it was an amazing, it's amazing to see and be reminded of how stringent we were to making sure the people coming in here were willing to work, uh, weren't bringing in illnesses, and weren't going to be on the public charge or in need of benefits overwhelmingly. And ultimately, that they assimilated to the idea of America. You contrast that today, 75.9% of refugees that come to America are on food stamps. Uh, and I think refugee, the distinction between refugees and immigrants was different wow. then, right? You had a different classification and all that. But the expectation was if you come here, you come here to work, you come here to invest, you come here to become an American which is a little bit different than the sort of multicultural ethos that we have today, which is kind of do your own thing. And it changes, changes the fabric of your country. Do you have any ancestors that came through there? I, we checked. Not, they the all came from this. Norway, but I don't think there were any there that came through Ellison. Vikings. Viking, they came right. on their own ships <laughs> by themselves. And then they burned their, their boats when they got here. <laughs> That's